Here's everything you might have missed in the Picard Season 3 premiere. Welcome back to Nerdist News, I'm Kyle Anderson, and today we're taking a jaunt over to the 25th century with the premiere of Star Trek Picard's third and final season. The first season of the series dealt with former Admiral Jean-Luc Picard's relationship with the Romulan people, along with his complicated history with the Borg Collective. Picard Season 2 was a time travel jaunt that also dealt with Picard's complicated history with the Borg Collective. While we've had cameos from other members of the Enterprise D crew in Picard before, Season 3 seems like it's going to be one final mission for the crew and the first time they've all been together since 2002's Star Trek Nemesis. You remember, the film where a young Tom Hardy plays a young Picard clone created by the Romulan Star Empire. He also pulls a spike through his own guts. <laughs> With Picard's final season set to be a swan song to Star Trek The Next Generation, obviously the opening episode, the appropriately titled The Next Generation, is full of Easter eggs and references to Star Trek as a whole. And we're here to break them all down for you right now. And if you want to read even more about the Easter eggs in the Picard premiere, check out Eric Diaz's article over on Nerdist.com. Thanks for spotting these, Eric. But if you don't want to be spoiled as to what's going to happen in the 25th century, consider this your spoiler warning. Ready? As ever. This episode set up several plot lines for the season. Picard gets a mysterious message from Dr. Beverly Crusher, who he hasn't seen in 20 years. He and Riker hitch a ride on the Titan A, and Rafi is on a top secret mission of her own for Starfleet intelligence to discover who stole quantum tunneling technology from Daystrom Station. But even if this episode was mostly place setting for the rest of the season, it was still chock full of Easter eggs from the very first scene. Obviously, the first reference was in the episode's title, The Next Generation, but there was also an Easter egg in the opening title card that says, In the 25th Century. This is a nod to the opening of the second Star Trek film, The Wrath of Khan, which opens with a similar card that says, In the 23rd Century. And then the episode opens in Dr. Beverly Crusher's ship, The Elios. This is the first time we've seen her in Picard, and she got her fair share of Easter eggs in the opening sequence. Her comedy and tragedy masks are a reference to her love of theater, both acting and playwriting. We see this in episodes like Season 4's The Nth Degree, where she performs with everyone's favorite anxious Starfleet officer, Lieutenant Reginald Barkley. The case belonging to her deceased husband and Picard's friend Jack Crusher was seen in the Season 4 episode Family. This is one of multiple references in the episode to Picard and Beverly's will-they-won't-they -they romantic energy. You even tried to be lovers, didn't you? <laughs> tried is the operative word. She also has some orchids on display, which we also see in the Next Generation Season 5 episode, Cause and Effect. Her computer is playing one of Picard's logs from Best of Both Worlds, where he hides the Enterprise in a nebula, which is what Crusher ends up doing as well. Her plaque honoring her service in saving the planet Kor Koroli 5 from a space virus is mentioned as a classified mission in the Season 3 episode, Allegiance. We're getting deep cuts to things not even seen in the show! Her jacket looks like an updated version of the away team jackets Kirk and company wear in The Wrath of Khan. You know, the one he wears when he yells, Khan! That's the one. Picard's office is also full of references. He just loves a collection, being an amateur archaeologist who funds other archaeologists, as we learn in Star Trek Lower Decks. First off, he has his classic Enterprise D painting from his ready room. Who wouldn't want to keep that piece of art around? Take this painting down and pack it up, please. He also seems to have held on to his golden Enterprise D and E models, as well as his old Enterprise D com badge and uniform. We see the Resican flute from the absolute classic episode, The Inner Light. This is the episode where he learns to play that flute as he lives an entire life after being probed by an alien, well, probe. There's a reason this episode is considered one of the best in the entire TNG run, so if you haven't seen it, check it out right now. He's got an award from the Bajorans, and there's also a nod to Picard's love of archaeology and the sixth season episode, The Chase. This was when Picard's archaeology mentor, Dr. Galen, gifts Picard a priceless artifact, a fully intact Third Dynasty Curlin Nescus. From the workshop of the Master of Darkwind Hill. This item also shows up in Star Trek Generations after the Enterprise-D was destroyed. Good to see that rare piece stayed intact. Indeed. His glasses also feel like a reference to Kirk's glasses in The Wrath of Khan. For most patients your age, I usually recommend Retinox 5. In orbiting Earth, we see that Earth's space dock has been expanded. This first appeared in Star Trek III The Search for Spock. It's good to see some of Starfleet history still in service after so much time. Approaching the Titan A is reminiscent to Star Trek The Motion Picture. Captain Shaw's Neo-Constitution-class ship, the Titan A, is two references in one. First, it's a refit of the ship that Riker took command of after his time on the Enterprise D&E. While the Titan was mentioned in Star Trek Nemesis, the first time we actually saw it was in Star Trek Lower Decks, which takes place 20 years before Picard. 
The fact that we're getting a new ship being christened the Titan A means that Riker's Luna-class Titan was either decommissioned or destroyed. Showrunner Terry Metalis confirmed it was a bit of both in an interview with TrekMovie.com, where he said it was damaged and retired, with some of its components making it into this new Titan. The second reference is that the Titan A's ship class is the Neo-Constitution, a reference to the Constitution-class starship made famous by Kirk's Enterprise in the original series. Metalis also confirmed that the Neo-Constitution is a fan design by Bill Krauss, and multiple fan designs will be made canon in this season of Picard. We also get a classic bosun whistle, which appears in the Trek films as a callback to Starfleet's roots in naval exploration history. One of the Titans crew looks to be a Chalnoth, a usually anarchistic species first seen in the season three episode, Allegiance. Seven of Nine, now going by Commander Annika Hansen, is the ship's first officer, and we even see a LaForge on the bridge with Sydney Crash LaForge at the helm. Because you crashed the shuttle? I, I was a cadet. Twice. LaForge's daughter was also named Sydney in the alternate future shown in the Next Generation's finale, All Good Things. And when the Titan A leaves Space Dock, it of course made us remember the last time we saw a Constitution class leave Space Dock, back in Star Trek The Undiscovered Country. But Riker's ruse is also reminiscent of when the Enterprise refit was stolen by Kirk and company in the search for Spock. Jean-Luc gifts Captain Shaw a bottle of wine from his own vineyard Chateau Picard, which has appeared throughout the series as well as TNG episodes like the series finale All Good Things. Shaw isn't in love with Picard and Riker's past exploits, mentioning crash landings like we see in Star Trek Generations. Oh He's even deleted Riker's jazz from the computers! What an a-hole! Rafi's first appearance this season is on the planet Metalis Prime, a reference to series showrunner Terry Metalis. She's searching for quantum tunneling tech stolen from Daystrom Station. This tech could be used as a weapon, as gets later confirmed. While we haven't seen Daystrom Station yet, the Daystrom Institute is a prestigious organization based in Okinawa, Japan. The Institute has been seen before in Picard. It's originally named for Dr. Richard Daystrom, the scientist from the original series episode, The Ultimate Computer. Rafi's search for the Red Lady has a reference to the Bajoran Gratitude Festival, but it ultimately leads her to a statue of Captain Rachel Garrett outside of the Starfleet recruitment office that gets destroyed via Quantum Tunnel. Garrett was the captain of the Enterprise C, the Ambassador-class predecessor to the Galaxy-class Enterprise D, captained by, you guessed it, Jean-Luc Picard. Indeed. The Enterprise C was seen in the classic season three TNG episode Yesterday's Enterprise when we learned the fate of the Enterprise C. Garrett and the ship were lost while trying to save a Klingon outpost on Narendra 3. This, along with the Kittimer Accords seen in Star Trek The Undiscovered Country, served to cement the Federation and Klingon empires as allies. While the Klingons and the Federation used to be bitter enemies, the original series episode Errand of Mercy foretold the two factions becoming friends. Garrett's sacrifice plays into one of the major themes of the entire Star Trek franchise, that mutual respect and empathy for other beings, even those with which you don't see eye to eye, will lead to a better future. The undiscovered country. The episode ends on a new threat to the Elios after Picard finds Crusher. And we also get the revelation that Crusher has a son. No, not Wesley, another son we haven't met before. But the references don't stop there, why would they? The closing credits to the episode also had its fair share of Easter eggs. There's a reference to a ship called the Constance, which first appears in the 1999 game Star Trek Birth of the Federation. We learn that the Starfleet Museum on Athen Prime, which we know is run by Geordi LaForge, houses Captain Kirk's Enterprise A, along with Captain Sulu's Excelsior, Admiral Janeway's Voyager, and the NCC-1500 Pioneer from Star Trek Online. Also, the music in the show and the credits harkens back to two Star Trek film themes composed by the legendary Jerry Goldsmith, First Contact and The Motion Picture. The Motion Picture theme was also adapted to be the theme song to Star Trek The Next Generation. We're excited to see where this season of Picard boldly goes with a new episode next Thursday. But in the meantime, what do you folks think? What was your favorite reference in the episode? What other classic Trek ship should get a new version? Botany Bay. Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com. Nerdist.com